Mm. All right, running shoe thingies, take one. All right. Nailed it. Hi, I'm Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Megan with Believe in the Run. And we're about to go into our favorite category issues because it's the most exciting. Yeah, race day. And before we get started, we're going to go through our race day issues that we've gotten in 2024. Yeah, so 2024, not what came out in 2023 or 2022. Those are never to be seen here. We're also going to be switching out Megan and Robbie, covering different ones. We don't all run in all the shoes, so uh, I run in pretty much all. But some of us has got more miles than others, so mm -hmm. we're gonna swap out a little bit here and there. So here's what's gonna be exciting. We're also gonna talk a little bit right now about our paces, and so that if you're trying to relate to one of us as a runner, I kind of feel like pace doesn't matter. It's more about the effort, but I'm also slower than Megan. <laughs> <laughs> so that might be why Checks I'm gonna out. say that. Anyway, so I've been running now for quite a while and my all-time PR is a 3.20 in the marathon, so a 7.39 pace for the marathon. I wouldn't call it my modern PR. About a year and a half ago, I ran a 3.25 and that's what I would probably consider my, my goal pace or goal, like if I was really gonna throw down for a marathon, that's what I'd be aiming for right now. Anything around sub 3.30 would be very exciting to me at this point and that's where I train for. Meg, where are you? Um, I am right around the, well, my PR is a 245 from Chicago um, of this past year. I don't know if I'm in that shape right now, but um, yeah, my goals are around the, the low 240s right now, so that's where I'm training, that's what And what's I'm your long-term dream? Uh, one day to hit that OTQ standard. Which is? Now, right now, it's a 237. Yeah, and while we're talking about marathon and marathon PRs and not halves and 10Ks and 5Ks, pretty much for us, these are the same shoes that we would use for a 10K, 5K. Like, I know that there's tempo shoes and there's shoes specifically designed for those distances, but when we're lacing up, these are the shoes that we're gonna put on for race day. So there's probably three attributes that we look for in a mm -hmm. shoe. One. The weight, it's gotta be light because you want to feel light on race day. Especially towards the end of that marathon, every extra ounce that you're lifting up and putting down, it gets tiring. So the lighter the shoe, it, our feeling is the better. And now, number two, mate. The propulsive feeling that you get from the plate and the foam or that combination, that pop, that's really what we love. Yeah, and the way that it works together. So you can have really good foam, but the plate just isn't right, doesn't hit in the right spot for your foot to strike and you just don't feel as much like oomph coming off the toes. That squish and then the energy return paired with a plate that's pushing you forward really gives you that encouragement. I feel like when your legs are tired, when you're trying to go long distance, to just keep feeling that kind of like lever feeling underneath your foot. So number three, Meg, what are we looking for? That's gotta be the foam. Gotta be the foam. Most of the shoes we're gonna be talking about today are Piba Base. There's some blends in here and stuff like that. We're not gonna get too technical into the foam, but what we're really looking for is that energy return and comfort. So a lot of the foams that we love are ones that when you land, give you kind of like that soft feeling and then bounce you back up and pair with the plate, you're gonna get that propulsive feel. So Meg, without any more preamble, I guess we're gonna bring Robbie in and get started. So I'll see you in a little bit to go over the shoes that we're gonna talk about. All right, as promised, magically, I was able to summon Robbie from the heavens. I'm here. And here he is. It's not the first time that happened. It is not, I've had, it's almost like Thor where you raise the hammer and Robbie's a lightning. The trash hammer and yeah. I'm there. Yeah. Anyway, Meg and I had kind of talked about our marathon PRs to kind of give people an idea of how to relate to maybe, I don't know why it relates, but people seem to like to know. People want to know. People how you, how you run, how fast you run, how slow you run in some cases. My marathon PR is a 327. Uh, it's still in that range. I'd say 330 range. I feel like that's what, that's <laughs> what I'm going for. We'll you say, sound just like me. <laughs> we'll, say, we'll tease it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I mean that. If you average, if you round up, that counts, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But anyways, uh, here's more, the thing: you're training when you're wearing these shoes. You're training, and I think your goal pace 
is probably, I'm not talking about right. what you're hitting. And I would actually say that normally when you're training, like I am still training for that time zone, mm -hmm. you probably train faster uh, than, than I do. I think that you, you haven't unleashed your beast. My yet. chorus says 324, so wow. I'll go with that. Yeah. Uh, anyways, but in more of a, a during faster pace is more of a midfoot striker. I'd say like yeah, even just in normal pace is more midfoot. And I'm midfoot and supinates like a mofo. I do, and a, <laughs> middle, and a little bit on the lighter side. I would say like in under 140. So are you saying weight wise? Yeah. Oh, we didn't even get into weight. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's like. You know, depending on certain shoes, I think that's why maybe like the Primex Strong, I wasn't super into, but yeah, I would yeah. agree with that. Okay, the cool. dynamics of that. All right, all right. Yeah. Anything else? I don't know. I feel like I said <laughs> I'm probably around 170, 175. We're gonna start with a shoe that is designed for running races, but I tend to think it's better for other uses. So number nine on yeah. our list. Hoka Cielo X1. Yeah, I mean, number nine on our race day list, maybe number one in our hearts, I don't know. It's. <laughs> I do love say? this shoe. This has probably become one of my favorite trainers. I'm, I don't wanna say of all time, but it's up there with like, the ones that I love, like Super Blast, this one, mm -hmm. the Super Blast, and this, this one. one. <laughs> yeah, they probably- It's a short list. Yeah, probably my two favorite like shoes is just gobble miles. I've been using this for all my long runs in this training cycle. When we took went down to Orlando, this was the only shoe I brought and I did all my miles in it. And it can pick up the pace for sure and it has a crazy bounce mm -hmm. to it that just feels literally like a trampoline in my, if, the way I experience it. Although it's not what we would probably pick for a marathon or even half marathon, this shoe just won the Gate River Run on the feet of Hoka athlete Rachel Smith. Yeah. And so it, it, it can run. She outkicked uh, one of our favorites, Kira D'Amato. Yeah. So let's get to the upper a little bit. Uh, it's got a nice fitting upper. It's a little bit on the warm side. I would say a little thick. And that's the weight is really where this one loses some points with us. This one's at 11 ounces uh, plus for my size 10 and a half, which gets a little clunky. Now it does kind of make up for it with some of the bounce that Robbie was talking about. The roll through, Hoka knows their rockers. They know how to make the shape of the shoe just roll through your stride. This one does it. While it feels unstable while you're standing around, Robbie, when you're moving. Yeah, it cruises and it feels pretty stable under the foot. Uh, I was kind of surprised because I thought, again, it was gonna be incredibly unstable. Once you get going, it locks in, keeps your foot over that. Uh, over the plate, over the over the midsole in general, and it, yeah, it just feels really nice. I think that the winged carbon fiber plate helps a lot in that regard, and yeah, it just locks you in, rolls along super smooth. The aggressive rocker just keeps you going forward. Traction's really good, mm -hmm. and we've, we've heard some whispers of what the update's gonna be like, and I do think we're gonna get a lighter feeling shoe coming up. And they're getting rid of these laces, so thank God. Yeah, these laces were one of the things we knocked but the best thing about this shoe, and probably why it's high up on my list as far as like a training shoe and getting those long, slow distance miles in, mm -hmm. is after I'm done running, my legs feel fresh. Like you don't feel beat up in this shoe. This shoe takes care of you. Yep, for sure. I would definitely think that this would be something that if you are a larger runner, you might wanna take a look at this. Or if your goal is to get through a marathon comfortably, this could be the shoe. Yep. And the only pr thing about this that might put people off a little bit is the price point. It's two hundred eighty-five dollars, which is a lot. So I get it, but if you got the money, you should go for it. And I have to say, of the shoes that we're talking about, I probably have the most miles in this one, and it's held up pretty well. And the foam still feels really nice and bouncy. So I I've put quite a few miles on here. I think I'm close to a hundred on this one, and it still feels fresh. All right, Meg, so now we're talking about the eighth shoe on our list. That is the Mizuno Rebellion Pro 2. And this one is really unique. Yeah, I mean, just looking at it, you can tell the rocker is very extreme. So they're measuring here for the USATF rules, which you can see isn't as high stacked as it is here. It's probably over 40 millimeters right here. Matter of fact, we know it is, but 
This shoe is still fun to run in and it gives you that cush and it gives you that feeling that we're looking for. Break this down a little bit. Yeah, well, you were talking about stacks, so it's 38 to 36, so only a two millimeter drop here and mm -hmm. a lot of, lot of cushion and stuff happening under the foot. Um, the rocker is very apparent, very extreme. You feel it as soon as you put the shoe on. This shoe's almost impossible to heel strike in. Yeah. Um, and the upper is pretty traditional race day upper where it's very minimal, very light. The laces are simple. There's like almost no padding except for a little bit um, around the mm -hmm. collar and ankle here. And yeah, you put it on and it, it feels like a race day shoe, but it's, it's, it requires a little bit of break in, I think. Yeah, and it does have two different foams paired with a, a carbon fiber plate. So make this sensation running in this. Like I said, you can't land on your heel. You got a lot of bounce off this midfoot and it kind of leans you forward and pushes you forward. So the weight's pretty good. For a men's size eight, it's about 7.6 ounces, which is right in there. You're getting up into the eights when it gets to my size. I like the way it has a smooth transition. The only thing that I wasn't prepared for it, is the way that it lands a little bit. My ankles did a little bit of extra work in this shoe. Yeah, and as someone who tends to heel strike, um, I found that it didn't always get the perfect roll through. It almost felt like a little bit of breaks at some times. However, once I was picking up the pace and really getting that turnover right, they really like just cruise nicely. What did you think about the stability like when you're cornering? Um, I didn't have any issues. There's obviously a ton of um, rubber traction underneath, so no issues in that sense. It is, you do feel like you're on a very high platform, so I did, you know, take corners a little bit more slowly, but no real issues. Yeah, I felt like the traction was really good. I love the things that Mizuno is doing. I feel like they're bringing their game back up and kind of making a name for themselves back in running where they used to be such a powerhouse. They've kind of been quiet for a little while. Now we're starting to see some interesting shoes. We uh, reviewed the Flash 2, which is kind of like the training partner to this shoe. And we're pretty impressed with some of the more cutting edge technologies they're starting to do in their shoes. Yeah, so this is their newest race day shoe and it's available now for $250. $250, that's probably gonna be a magic number for a lot of these shoes. You'll see, they go All higher. All right, they go higher. All right, let's do the next one. All right, Meg, so we're down to number seven. And we are here with the Puma Fast R2. I think you gotta throw a nitro in there somewhere. No, we're just going for it. All right, so this is an interesting one. This is one of the shoes that doesn't have Piba in the midsole. It's an aliphatic ETPU, mm. which... Say that four times fast. I'm not a chemistry major. I don't really know what that means, but I know it's different than Piba, and I know this shoe's a little heavier than some of the other ones that we're reviewing today. Yeah, so one of the big updates with this shoe from the previous version was that they did incorporate that foam into the heel. Um, so you get that softer landing and that pop. Like we were saying in the intro of this video, one of the things we look for is that propulsive feeling. And I feel like you really get it in this shoe, but there's a caveat, you really have to be running fast. Yeah, this one rewards you for pushing. The grip on it is the Puma grip. We always love some Puma grip. The fit of the upper was surprisingly nice. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't look like much. You don't see a lot of overlays or anything like that. I think that a lot of the taping is done underneath. So I guess they're underlays, but the fit was really nice. I like the tongue. Everything about the fit was great. Now, the weight of the shoe I mentioned at the beginning, this one weighs what? Nine something ounces? 9.3 for, for your size 10 and a half. Which is on the higher end yeah. of the race. There's only one other shoe that weighs more than this. And we kind of even kicked that one out of like the options for marathon racing because of its weight. This one still floats right under the radar. We've seen some people do some really impressive yeah. uh, races in this shoe. Would it be your first choice for a race? Obviously. No, not my first choice, but I do feel like, especially for me, um, I need to be racing like a mile or maybe a 5K in order to get that leg turnover to feel that pop that we were talking about. So for the marathon distance, this probably isn't my pick, but I do think it'll work for some people, especially if you tend to um, land more on your toes. Yeah, and that was one of my favorite sensations was the feeling underneath your toes on this shoe is really nice. Like I like the way that it felt that pop off the toe. 
I'm not running as hard as Megan, so I'm not even getting to her 5K, 10K paces, but I still was able to feel the benefit of the plate and the cushioning under the foot when I was doing my workouts. And I was hitting my paces when I did my workouts in this shoe. So even with the weight where I would be concerned about the weight would be in the later stages of the marathon. When my form starts breaking down, when I'm getting tired, I've been out there for a while. I feel like that's when the weight of the shoe would, would be a factor. But I think this will definitely work for some people. It's why it's on our list of top shoes for 2024. Um, it's, it's fun. It's crazy looking. So maybe you're into that. Um, and it's available now for $260. All right, Robbie, we're at number six here. What do we have in our hands? We have the Diodora Gara Carbon. Diodora known to make some very good looking shoes in the past, not the best performing. Italian style. Yeah. So when they came out with, uh, we heard they're making a race day shoe with some, you know, P-backs, Piba style midsole, some upgraded components. We were like, we were interested, but a little bit hesitant to see what it'd be like. I was almost worried because I, I really liked their team. And I was like, ah, oh, we're gonna get this shoe. And I, I just know it's <laughs> not gonna compete with the other stuff. Yeah, but it does, mm -hmm. for real. Like, it's legit. And it has, like I said, it has that Peebo midsole, what they call Anima PBX. It has a carbon fiber plate. It has a matrix upper, which is just- Yeah, pretty... remind me what the matrix upper is. Yeah, so Ma matrix is like a proprietary uh, brand that has makes uppers for a lot of like soccer cleats. Uh, so it's a formula ingredient, kind of like Gore-Tex. Like if you buy a right. Matrix, it's a brand name. Exactly. Okay. And they make super durable, but yet breathable uppers. You'll see some see them sometimes with some trail shoes. And again, it's it holds true. It's incredibly, it's it's comfortable, it's breathable, but you can tell there's some durability in there as well. Yeah, I, this upper is going nowhere. Now, the feeling of this one, there's three shoes that are pretty similar. They're gonna be coming up next. And they all have a similar feel. It was really hard to pick between these shoes how we are gonna roll them out. We basically just rolled the dice on these. But the next three are, are really similar with the P-Bags mm -hmm. feel, the plate aggressiveness, and the fit. They're all really good choices. This one, I think why we put it where we put it was probably we had to figure out what would be like a, a way to differentiate them. And this one's price is a little bit heavier. Yeah, and this is a $300 shoe. So that puts it, I think at the, at the, has to be the highest race day shoe that I know of right now. And again, it's less manufacturing qu like quantities that go into the shoe. So. Again, all the premium materials, you've got the matrix upper, the carbon fiber plate, the p backs style midsole. Like, yeah. it's, it's, to it's create, right around that range. To create this shoe for a company like Diodora is different than Nike mm -hmm. creating a p back shoe. They're just not yeah. gonna create the same amount of shoes. The design that goes into it, there's, but, there's a lot of factors. However, this one fits right in with the ones that are coming up and weight wise for my size 10 and a half, this was right there like in the in the mix, I think it's right under nine ounces. Mm -hmm. And it feels good, it runs well, the grip was good. Robbie, what would be your drawback on this shoe? Uh, I mean, for me, I like a more aggressive feel in a shoe. So as you'll see, maybe some, some of the shoes that are coming up. Uh, it's a little bit softer to me, a little bit more of a, when you get it to that pace, kind of you can ride it. And I think some people really love that feel. I like a snappier feel to it, so. But it, it has that same rebound that you'll find in any of the shoes that we're talking about in this uh, in the four, five, six category. Yeah, this this one, if I was blindfolded, the only thing I would be able to tell the difference between it and say maybe the Saucony or the New Balance underfoot would just be the way the upper feels. Mm -hmm. Which is a good thing, by the way. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's the Diodora Gara Carbon. Yeah, excited to see a lot of good stuff coming out of Diodora this year. They've upgraded their foams. So now they're not just good looking shoes, they're shoes that actually can perform and compete with some of the top brands. Yeah, ciao. Ciao. We're to number five here with the five. Saucony Endorphin Pro 4. All right, I feel like there's a bunch of shoes right here clustered together that you could kind of like, we're, we're pulling hairs to see yeah. the difference in them. They're all about the same weight. They're, the foam feels right, the uppers fit right. 
Like these come down to like, do you like Saucony? Do you like maybe another brand? But this one, really well executed. Um, one of the major things that they did to this is they added a layer of Power Run HG, which is the foam that you'll find in the Elite. It's not Piba foam, um, it's some other version, but it's very bouncy and responsive. But I, there's so little of it, I don't even know if it matters. It feels, it feels great. I don't know how much it impacts it, but you can't say that this doesn't feel great. Yeah, but I like it up here and that's where there's none. <laughs> okay. Uh, the rest of the midsole is their Power Run PB, which is the Piba base foam. And then they have this fancy new sock liner in here, which I think really adds to the step and feel. The upper, I think they really cleaned it up nice. I love the look. I like the way that they made it more aggressive and I, it feels more aggressive. Like when you're running in this shoe, I like the cushioning on the uh, three. This one, I feel like just has that extra bit of pop and you can feel the plate a little bit more. Yeah, I think it's really nice. It's like a perfect blend of the softness that allows that foot to sort of sink down a little bit and then the propulsion from the plate. It's just got a really nice underfoot feel. It's comfortable, so I could run in this for easy miles and fast miles and it felt great. Like Thomas was saying, the upper is really comfortable. I had some weird issues with the tongue, but I think that was a me problem. Um, and yeah, overall, it's I've done a ton of long runs in this shoe. You can see it's pretty trashed. Um, and it's just a really good race day option. Just a couple more stats there, eight millimeter drop, and this one is available now for 225, so on the lower Ooh. end. If you're worried about whether or not you should have a super shoe and you're like, oh, I don't know, I'm in that in between, I think this one's fine for all paces. It didn't seem like you had to like really ratchet up to feel like you're getting the most benefit the cushioning feels good. The upper fits well. It's light enough for my size, 10 and a half. It's eight and a half ounces. So the rubber is tacky. This one kind of, if you wanna play, this one's a good one to try out. We're gonna have a couple other that I feel the same way about. Number four, I said we're splitting hairs and this one has a lot of characteristics that I liked in the previous shoe is in this one, they're kind of like, which brand do you like better? We're talking about the New Balance SC Elite V4, and it was very similar to the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4. The big, big update for this shoe for New Balance was that you have an entirely new midsole formula, which is made of Piba, and it just totally changed the shoe for the better. You really get that sink in and propulsive feeling that we've been talking about. Um, the upper is very simple. There's nothing really exciting about it, but I think it works. Yeah. While my New York City marathon was a disaster, I ran in a proto of this shoe with the same foam in London and actually had a really nice day there around 3.30 for the marathon. Like I said, that's my sweet spot. Um, and really enjoyed the foam, felt it's responsive and bouncy. I love the new design on this shoe. I really like the way it looks. I think it's a little polarizing. I think some people aren't as fond of it as I am, but it's got kind of like this edgy, I call it Tesla truck kind of like angular I see it. feeling. But the thing is, again, on this one, the foam works with the plate really well. I am gonna say for people who have wider feet, I think this upper accommodates a little better. Yeah. I was like checking it out because I was running the Rebel this morning and I was like, it has a similar upper. It's not sloppy in the front at all, where I feel like it's a little more difficult for people with narrow feet is locking it down over the arch. So that's something to think about. This one does a better job than the Rebel because it does have some uh, support on both the lateral and medial side to kind of give you that snugger feel. I, I just like this shoe, it's fun to run in. I don't know that it feels as lightning fast as we get down towards the next few shoes, but it's fun, it's fast. And this one runs a little bit on the heavier side at 9.3 ounces for my size 10 and a half. It's a little heavier than the Saucony, but I don't know, they feel really similar. Yeah, um, and like the Saucony, I feel like this is a shoe that not only feels great on those really fast days, but you can also get in those easy miles. It's just comfortable. So I think it's gonna work for a lot, a lot of people, um, regardless of your pace. And like Thomas said, it is a little bit um, heavier than the Saucony. So my women's seven and a half came in around seven ounces. So it's not, it's not crazy, but it is a little bit on the heavier side, which if you don't mind at all and you prefer the comfort, this is definitely a solid option. This one again is going to be more democratic. More people who maybe wouldn't try super shoes 
this is the one to go for. Yeah. It just is really accommodating and it's got a wider base, it's stable, and I just think it will work for a lot of people. Yeah, so this is also available now and you can get it for $250. Yeah, and a little shout out to uh, Chris Chavez who went sub three at the Houston Marathon. In these guys. In these guys. And he chose it, he had option to do any of the shoes that we're talking about and he went with this guy. So that's something. 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 All right, Robbie, a lot of people can't tell the difference between me and you. Yeah, it's a very common thing for blind people. Yeah, they're like, which one is which? Yeah. And uh, the next shoe on our list is two shoes. Yeah. Two that people shoes. have difficulty. Yeah, it's basically one of those highlights magazine, can you spot the difference? Mm -hmm. And if you have an untrained eye, which you might, especially if you're blind, uh, you might not be able to spot the difference in these two shoes. I can. But I will tell you. Okay. And we'll talk about those. On the feet, on the feet, on the run. There, There's a big difference. There is a big difference. All right. Which I, which, I even which think it's was... more dramatic than it was in the previous version of the Metaspeed Sky mm -hmm. and Edge. This is the Metaspeed Sky Paris and the Metaspeed Edge. Paris, Paris by the company Asics. Yes. <laughs> Which if you don't know what the tiger stripes are, you might as well just, you shouldn't be watching this. Video. Yeah, but the great thing is they made sure that the colors are the same. There's only subtle differences. The painting and the indication here kind of shows you where the plate is in the shoe, which the sky is closer to the foot. Mm -hmm. And the sky has a nice red bottom versus mm -hmm. the edge that has the black bottom. Yep. Other than that, you would look at this on a shelf and be like, which one is it? And even for us, we're like grabbing them, looking at it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I do like the little uh, color blocking here that I feel like that really helps a lot compared to the past version. Like, yes, <laughs> right. it helps a little bit. All right, so anyways, let's get into this shoe, which okay. is, there are some specs with these shoes that are exactly the same. Like the weight. The weight, the drop, the stack height, my size 10 and a half in this shoe, mm -hmm. an amazing under seven ounces. Yeah, and uh, so which is lighter than what? The that's everything, lighter right? than that's lighter than the Vaporfly. The only shoe lighter than that is the Evo mm -hmm. One. Yeah, and the stack height in both these shoes is 39 and a half in the heel, 34 and a half in the forefoot, five millimeter drop. Uh, which the Edge Paris, this holding in my hand. It actually gets a little bump in millimeters in the forefoot, I believe four millimeter more of foam in the, in the forefoot for a little bit of extra cushion. But I gotta say, it changes the feel a lot from last year. Mm -hmm. um, and of course we have that carbon fiber play that we mentioned, the Asics Grip outsole, and uh, all together, a nice, tidy, lightweight package. Okay. Let's get into it. This action. is kind of weird because I feel like I'm in an Oreo cookie where Megan's on one side, Robbie's on the other, and I'm kind of like, I'm happy with both sides. Okay. So you're, you're a peacemaker. Yeah. Let's start off with the edge and explain why it's kind of shift places with the previous Metaspeed Sky. So this has a brand new foam in it with a Flight Foam Turbo Plus, Turbo Plus. and it is Asics own Piba blend. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is not actual Piba or Pebax, it is their own blend of it. Yes. So chemically, again, not getting into it. Yeah. Anyhow, what happened to this is the foam is a little bit softer, a little more bouncy. So I kind of felt the previous shoes were a little too harsh. I've talked about in the previous review, when it came time to run Tokyo, I preferred the Super Blast mm -hmm. over the Metaspeed because I just felt like it beat up my feet too much. This foam is really improved. Yeah, I have to agree. It feels like it competes with the Vaporfly, the Alpha Fly, that PBAC style foam that you're seeing in the top, top of the tier, top of the tier shoes. Yeah, um, it feels great. It's propulsive. Now, really what we're gonna talk about here is the plate and you can actually see it on the medial side a little bit better. We're talking about the edge here and this is what separates maybe a preference that Robbie prefers over Megan. We don't even care about cadence anymore. This is just how you like the shoe to feel mm -hmm. underfoot. So throw out the old stuff about the Metaspeed Edge and the Metaspeed Sky, where one was a cadence shoe and one was a stride shoe. It's just the comfort underfoot. So this one you can kind of see here on the medial edge, 
the plate dips down. So you have more foam over the plate underneath your foot. You get more of a bouncy, softer feel under the palm of your foot. So if you're riding it and you like that feeling of having that squish down and then pop, which is similar to, I would say, like an alpha fly feeling. And that's why I think Megan likes it so much. She gets that sink down and then the pop off the plate. Mm -hmm. But you don't love that as much. Yeah, it. I feel like the opposite of what the Edge was, the Edge Plus was in the previous version, because of that extra cushion, I feel like I don't get as much of a snappy feel like from it. Like aggressive feel? Yeah, an aggressive feel from it. I felt like it's overall, it's a softer shoe, so it's harder to get going. Once you get in a pace or rhythm, it's easier to keep it there. But I like that aggressive feel, whether you need to pick it up quickly or move you know, at faster paces, which I felt came in the Sky Paris. So I wasn't a big fan of the Sky Plus last year. My opinions have switched to where I'm now more of a <laughs> fan of the Sky Paris. I felt like this had, for me, even a better lockdown. I felt like there was heel lift in the edge. I felt like it locked down like a true racing shoe. It picked up exactly when you need it to and got to where you wanted to, but there's still enough comfort underfoot where it feels very much like the Vaporfly to me. It almost, I, th I would say in that same exact range. Uh, there's a couple, some more differences. I do feel this is a little more stable. I, th I feel like it's more stable than this shoe. Um, and yeah, so I just, I'm a Sky Paris fan, I yeah. gotta say. What Robbie was talking about kind of nails it. And so, for long distance and going long, I think I would probably go with the edge because I want that extra comfort. And like you said, you get to a certain pace and you can kind of lock in. But when I was doing 800 repeats, I really liked the sky for that because it has that more aggressive feeling because the plate's closer to the foot. You feel like you can leverage it a little bit more and you get a little more snap off the, off the uh, toe, especially when you're trying to like get up to speed real quick. Yeah. That's where I felt like what you're talking about. Now, both shoes, fantastic, breathable upper. They really did a nice job getting this upper. I didn't get the same heel lift that he got in it, but I think I know what he's talking about. It's just the way the plate hits in one versus the other. Do you think that you would change your mind? I know that Megan's all for the edge uh, Paris now. Would you change your mind if you were going the marathon distance or you think you want that snappy ride all the way through? Uh, no, I'd still, yeah, I would still take this. Paris, uh, Sky Paris over the edge, I feel like. I don't know, just personally, I like a more aggressive feel even at the risk of <laughs> thrashing my legs more. So it just feels like faster to me, so. How much does the edge Paris cost? This is $250. How much does the Sky Paris cost? It's $250. So again, not really helping you choose. Yeah. I don't think you can miss with either of these shoes. These have really impressed me. I love the update. Sometimes like, it's, it doesn't look a lot different, but the update to this one was substantial with the softer foam, the movement of the plate, the little more uh, foam under the foot on the edge. These shoes now are up there with the top. It, I kind of almost wish if we were running Tokyo again, we had these shoes to run it in. Yeah, exactly. And you've seen that with ASICS athletes, they're tearing up the races. Um, you Clayton, know, Clayton Young. Young and, and a lot of, uh, they're podiuming in the yeah. shoe, so. Emma Bates. Yeah. Lindsay, everybody gets a hold of it. They're crushing. Yeah. So, all right, cool. All right, Robbie, number two on the list. It's the Evo One, surprisingly. That's I, I kind of ironic this uh, too. Say the whole name. Oh. Without thinking. Adidas, Adi Zero, Adios, Pro Evo One. Uh, I'm actually impressed. You should be. <laughs> That's like, it's like a, a whole uh, Bible verse. Yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> This shoe is incredible. We talked about the beginning of the whole rundown, the, the components that we like in a race day shoe. And weight is one of the major ones. And this is the lightest race day shoe out there. It's in the five ounces for my size, 10 and a half. That's just ridiculous. It's bonkers. And look how much cushioning is on it considering that weight. That's a thick stack, Carl. Yeah. Yeah, so you're getting a lot of cushion. You're getting those uh, rods underneath. This liquid rubber. That's not dolphins. That's I actual. Like, that's a, yeah. Dude, I bet you could definitely attract some dolphins with yeah. that. Maybe that's what it's for. Um, those aren't dolphins. That's actually the grip of this rubber ripping the skin off my fingers. 
It works really well. I did do a half marathon in, in the rain and there was a couple spots where I felt a little dicey with this. So other than that, having a little bit of a slippery sensation on wet road, which, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe the Continental would have helped with that. Mm -hmm. This shoe just feels light. It feels, the foam is right. Everything feels great on this shoe. I say the one drawback is the price, Robbie. Yeah, I'd say that's the one, it's a big one. It's a $500 shoe. Uh, it's very hard to find right now. You might be able to pay twice as much on StockX. So that's why this one gets knocked down a little bit is the price point, I would say, I don't even know the durability. I've worn it for 20 miles so far. Think it's gonna hold up, but they're, they're talking in only 150 miles or so for it. Again, I think they're talking about their premium athletes, not their 330-ish. Uh, 320-ish to 330-ish marathon. Yeah, uh, I think it's less than that, though. Is it? All right. Dude, was, I think they said one marathon. One marathon? Well, <laughs> I'll be able to squeak out more than one. That's the drawbacks on the shoe. Price, availability, and durability are gonna kinda like yeah. knock this one off the top. This is for all you venture capitalists out there. Go yeah. have at it. But it is spectacular. It feels great underfoot. It's got all the great stuff, so Light Strike Pro. Uh, this is a different version of it, though, isn't it? Um, it's, it is a different formulation, but it also comes from, instead of being in a compressed mold, they just basically had the sheets of foam and then cut it out. Yeah, and, and the artisan the cuts it. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what can you say? This shoe is fun, slight, bouncy, and you probably won't try it. Yeah, but it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Ming, we're pulling out the big gun. Here we are, the number one race day shoe of 2024. Should we do the asterisk so far? Yeah, so far. <laughs> In case something else comes out, I don't know. It is March. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, it is the Nike Alpha Fly 3, which could not be a more exciting addition for me it's personally. It's gonna be tough to beat this one. Yeah, but it was especially exciting after the two, which we just did not love. We absolutely love the Alpha Fly one. The two, I wore once and never put on again. And here we are with the three, which is my all-time favorite race day shoe. It even trumps the original Alpha Fly. Wow. Yeah. Wow, you heard it here first. I think people want us to do it between two shoes of the, of the Alpha Fly one and the Alpha Fly three, but now we don't need to. This one wins. Meg, why is this better than even the Alpha Fly one? Well, first of all, the weight. So my women's seven and a half is 5.8 ounces, which is so, so, so light. Um, so I think that number one just was an amazing update. And then what they did is they basically took the best properties from the Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly and they meshed them together to create the shoe. The Alpha Fly one was kind of split into two parts. It, actually, if you look at the Fast Star that we showed earlier, that's kind of has the two parts to it. Yeah. That's kind of like similar to the way that the Alpha Fly was broken apart where you had the front part with the uh, AirPods and then you had the back heel section. There was a plate visible in between and the shoe was broken apart. They've kind of brought all the shoe together so it kind of feels more cohesive, less kind of, like you said, mechanical where it was like a front part and a back part working together. Now it just feels like one smooth transition from heel to toe. Yeah, you no longer have that decoupling. It's continuous midsole. So that's where that vapor fly feel kind of comes into place, but you still have the air pod. So you still get that alpha fly bounce and it's like the best of both worlds have come together. Um, this knit upper is super comfortable. It doesn't look like there's much padding and there isn't, but it really feels super comfortable when you put it on like a sock and it's just, there's- Adam knit. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it fits really well. Both our feet are different shapes. I've got a more narrow foot, mace wider. I was able to get a really nice lockdown on this shoe. I love the fit. It breathes almost too well. Like I took it out on a day where it was like 30 degrees. My toes were cold coming through here. There's just nothing stopping the air from going in and out of this shoe. We talked at the beginning about the three attributes we wanted was weight, propulsion through the plate, and the foam. This one adds that fourth element with the AirPods yeah. that really take that propulsion piece to another level. So my size weighs under eight ounces for a size 10 half, which is ridiculous with this much shoe. It's cushioned, feels great underfoot. You're knocking it, like when you get done with the run, 
You can do 20 mile run in this and your feet feel comfortable, your knees feel great, your legs feel great. This is the type of shoe that's allowing pros to re-up faster, run more marathons, get more miles, run higher mileage in preparation for marathons. This is the evolution of running. It hits all the boxes, plus some with the AirPod. It just, it really helps you when you have those tired legs at the end of a marathon. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a really, really good race day shoe. One thing we didn't note, 40 millimeters, eight millimeter drop, so that hasn't changed from the previous version. Um, it has gone up a little bit in price now, so you're looking at 285. Meg, is it worth it? It's worth every penny. I mean, if you're training this hard to do the marathon, why not get yourself? I bought a pair. Okay, yeah. It's worth it. <laughs> the one other thing I wanted to mention on a lot of these shoes, we talk about durability and people are like, how many miles can you get out of it? I do think if you're a pro runner or say that you're Megan here who's going for an extreme goal like OTQ or something like that, you're gonna wanna have a fresh pair for race day and really have you know, that foam lively. But for someone like me who's in that mid-range uh, area, these shoes really hold up well. The yeah. foam still feels good. We use a lot of these for training, so we'll use this shoe until it's not gonna be good for race day, and then we'll use it as a trainer. You really can get a ton of miles out of this. Don't look at it as people like, oh, it's only good for 200 miles or something like that. We've squeaked out up to 400 miles out of a pair of uh, Alpha Fly 1s. Yeah. You've, you've, we have a collection of Meg's Alpha Fly 1s that have you know, thousands of miles on them. Yeah, and I think that's exactly it, is people like to retire the shoes after maybe two or three races, but it, they're still great for training. And so you can get tons of miles out of them that way. Um, it's just another way to think about it. Yeah, and it is hard because people ask, they're like, well, why have a daily trainer if you have an old, you know, plated shoe that you can use? And it's a tough question. We see, we've seen the rise of super trainers and we talk about those. You can check out our videos on those where you kind of get that combo between a daily trainer and a plated race day shoe or the technologies that go into a race day shoe. And it just has made running so much fun that it's really hard to go back to just like your standard slab of EVA or something like that when it's so much fun to run in shoes like this. So think about that when you're picking out your race day shoe. Is it something that you would feel comfortable using maybe to get miles in after race day, keep using them and use them for those days where you want to pick up the pace or you just want to run a little faster, or maybe you're training and you want to use marathon pace, but you don't want to use your brand new shoes. You want to save those for race day. You can really get a lot of miles out of these shoes. So sometimes the price, while heavy, you still can get your money out of it. For sure. All right, those were our top nine race day shoes of 2024. Like we said, we might update if something crazy comes out. Oh, hey guys, it's Carl from Believe in the Run. Thomas, come check this out. Dave, doesn't this make sense? As soon as we're done recording, what happens? We get sent another shoe. Uh, so, Carl, are you familiar with Tear? Very slightly. We saw them over at the running event in Austin, Texas this past uh, November. Um, I got to see one of the shoes, which I'm assuming is this one. It is this shoe. So it's kind of crazy. Like it took years for everybody to catch up with Nike on the plated foams and everything for race day shoes. And now it seems like everybody's able to put out a competitor, even somebody that's not in the running space typically. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we haven't run it. Some of our reviewers have tried out this shoe. Why don't you tell them the name? So this is the Tier Valkyrie Elite Carbon. Yeah. So uh, what I was saying was it, it, people just weren't able to come up with a shoe. Now the Peebas out there, the plates are out there. People are getting them into shoes. The weight of this is right in there with some of the other shoes that we talked about, like the Gara Carbon, the Saucony Pro 4, the Elite 4 from New Balance. This weighs about 8.4 ounces. And uh, it's it, from everybody that we've talked to, it's a pretty good shoe. Yeah, we have a written review up on the site now and uh, a lot of the reviewers from our end really enjoyed it, so. Do you remember trying this on at uh, the running event? Very briefly, they didn't have too many of our size, so we kind of were like swapping. We're sharing. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I remember I remember being like, oh, this is cool, this is a really cool shoe. And when I found out who Tier actually was, I was like, oh wow, okay, I'm like, okay, they're yeah. making shoes now. Swimsuits, goggles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so who do you think, this shoe's targeted for then? 
I'm going to say it's probably going to be, I mean, if I was them, they already have an end to people that are buying swimming gear. I'd say it's for triathletes, but we're going to give it a shot. We're going to try it out. This happens to be a size 10 and a half that I'll, uh, I'll give it a few miles and see what's up. And uh, we'll get back to you and let you know what we think of the tier. It's great that the written review is already done. We also have one of our favorite shoes this year. It's got a little different purpose. It's still a race day shoe, still a carbon plate shoe, still has a Peebo layer on it. The S-Lab Spectre. We all love this shoe. It's great. It's aimed at people who are running 330 and above for the marathon. Does a great job. Great fitting upper. Look, Carl's going to put the stats like right here. Stats, yeah. Somewhere in the corner there. Yeah. So all that's for you. Another shoe you should be checking out, especially if you are someone who's going to be taking a little bit longer in the marathon. Maybe wants a shoe that you don't feel so much pressure when you get to the line and say, oh, everybody's staring at me because I'm wearing the Alpha Fly, you know, three or something and you feel like you're gonna run not as fast as the pros. Mm -hmm. This one's a nice compromise, very smooth transition from uh, heel to toe. Great feeling shoes. One of our favorites that we use for training miles and everything like that. So definitely check out the S-Lab Spectre as well. And we have a full video review of that as well as a written review. So <laughs> somewhere up here. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, all the resources there. So definitely check those, uh, those out. These are our favorites right now, um, and we'll be towing the line in them very soon. Do you like it when I do that? No, I do not. All right. So anyway, do us a favor. If you found this video valuable at all, go ahead and like it. Subscribe to the channel. Make Carl's day. Say something nice about Carl because he's had to edit this whole thing together. And these are long. And uh, make sure that you subscribe to our email because it tells you everything that we're doing every week. So post the videos. It posts the written reviews podcasts, all that in one spot. Plus you get Robbie's editorial, which is always fun. Always good. Um, so check that out. Meg, anything else I'm missing? Uh, this is the podcast. So The Drop comes out every Friday and Monday and Fuel for the Soul comes out every other Tuesday. All right, thanks. Is it on our uh, list of top shoes for 2024? This is the list of top I shoes. I thought this was top race shoes of 2024. That's, that's what I'm saying. Okay. All right. Jeez. It may be just uh, working your laces. I noticed here that you're not really using the runner's loop, but. I mean, it's tight. It's the whole way up. Same, same concept. Okay. Sorry, Robbie. <laughs> called him out. You might want to cut that part out. <laughs> um, anyway, the. I'm sure it does. Why are you not talking about anything? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want me to talk about something? <laughs> you just uh, keep saying one word. All right. <laughs> I'm like that date that you can't have a conversation with. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, all right. Which, what's that do, Robbie? S sorry. I, was, I didn't know I was being asked the question. Hey, I was trying to make it interactive. All right. <laughs> I don't even know what you said, honestly. All right. <laughs> it's right there a little bit. Mm. 0.08 ounces heavier than, or what is it? Eight ounces. No. Eight point. Don't do math right, right now. <laughs> <laughs>